Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Lovely to morning. see you. Yeah, I don't know where everyone's hiding this morning. They must be having a Sunday rest this morning, so they're not many of us. Um, but we'll still make the most of it, and we'll still sing our hearts out. Uh, Paul's just getting us logged in with Facebook and all the rest now, so we, we should be going very, very shortly. Um, just to say, share some good news, I keep hearing about more and more people being vaccinated, which I'm really pleased about, including my own parents, so I'm delighted. So, yeah, it's really good news. Good morning, Jean. What? Everyone, welcome to you. Well, Anna won't be with us today. She's not been well all week. Has she not? Got a bad back. She can hardly walk. Oh, oh dear. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no. Well, the dog's with us, so that's the important thing. <laughs> yes. She <laughs> <laughs> can make up for the noise, eh? <laughs> <laughs> she can sing extra loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just loud. laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, so each week I keep hearing about another person getting vaccinated and then another person getting COVID. And I keep hearing... Oh, it. no. So it's like, yeah. Wednesday for me. Wednesday. Good one. Right, nice one. Oh, brilliant. Okay, and Fee's had hers as well, aren't you? Yeah. Great stuff. Get all the NHS done first. Yeah, it makes sense. Right, a very, very warm welcome. If you'd like to all mute yourselves. Um, obviously, we're still part of the Christmas season, the second Sunday of Epiphany. Um, tonight, today we've got Vaughan preaching and Paul leading us in our intercessions. So we'll begin the service with a very warm welcome on YouTube and Facebook. And we'll begin the service with I come with joy, a child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we pray together. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins in a short period of silence. And we pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect for today. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for our gradual hymn, Christ is the one who calls.
Alleluia, alleluia, the word became flesh and dealt among, dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe this because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just before Christmas, I delivered a sermon about being set aside to be called upon to undertake God's work on earth, however small it may seem. When we feel that call, the burning in our heart, we should surrender and respond. <clears throat> We are being called to be transformed. Responding to the call transforms us. When we are needed, we will be sought out by God, by whoever God sends to seek us out. We will be found wherever we are, and we will be sent to do God's work. We may not even know we're doing it or have a say in what that task is. In this morning's gospel, Jesus found Philip, who then found Nathaniel. Philip probably wasn't actively searching for a job, but either way, using Jesus as hands and feet and voice upon earth, God found Philip in Galilee on that day because a job needed doing right then. Philip knew God. He knew the books of Moses and Jesus' role as the Messiah. Yet God sought out and found Philip at that moment. God's intention was that Philip find Nathaniel and then called him to come and see this new approach to his faith. Jesus was not always going to be on earth to do these things himself. This gospel demonstrates that we are called to do what Philip did, to invite people to come and see what Jesus can do, even people who believe in God. To take people beyond the written word of scripture and see what it means and how it works in the world. There is, I found, an unusual exchange between Nathaniel and Jesus. Nathaniel made light of the possibility that anything good might come out of Nazareth. Then Jesus responded. At least he was an open and honest Jewish man, someone who openly said what he thought. 
an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. But just because Jesus saw him under a fig tree, it seems that Nathanael virtually fell to his knees before Jesus. Rabbi, son of God, king of Israel. Why is that? What insight did Jesus display that gave right to such a dramatic response from Nathanael? Well, Philip had primed Nathanael, saying this was the Messiah referenced in Deuteronomy. Jesus then referenced Israelites and the deceitful Jacob, who was renamed Israel from the book of Genesis, then used a figure of speech, which is important, <laughs> saying, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And we can break that into three parts. Firstly, Jesus said he saw Nathaniel. The original word meant he didn't just see him, but he had a deep and perceptive understanding of who the real Nathaniel was. Secondly, in Hebrew scripture, the term resting under their vine and fig tree represented Israelites confidently living in God's peace and protection. So upon meeting, Jesus confirmed to Nathaniel that he knew he was a demonstrably honest Jewish man who had studied the Torah, a true Israelite in the scriptural sense. At least until, thirdly, Philip called him. This encounter moved Nathaniel deeply and spiritually. Philip's call had transformed him to explore something further by approaching Jesus Christ. Nathaniel, before Philip's call, was different after responding to it. As Jesus asked, did Nathaniel think Jesus was the Son of God just because he perceived people to be obedient Jews? Jesus was speaking to the crowd when he said that there was much more to come beyond Scripture and that they would see heaven and angels ascending and descending upon him, another reference to Jacob's dream in the book of Genesis. Reading it again, the under the fig tree remark may offer us Nathaniel representing someone devout, maybe complacent in their faith, who was rather dismissive of anything outside of it, until they are called to Jesus and may be transformed. Now I've met many people who having attended worship and heard Jesus' teachings, leave with that burning desire to do more for God's church and their community. That's the purpose of scripture. It's not just there to be heard and studied, it's there to be responded to. God sees us into the depths of us, knows our souls and what we are capable of. We are called to lift our heads from the page and see the possibilities transformation can bring. To empower us to serve others charitably online or in healthcare, social care, or just by acknowledging our neighbor with a phone call or a nod during this lockdown, it all makes a difference. Continuously seeking to be transformed into people serving the world inside and outside of the church. We are challenged to take people and to be taken ourselves beyond the written word of scripture and see how it works in the world, what it means in our lives and allow others to hear God's call to them. Amen. Thank you for those wise words, Vaughan. We'll now join in with the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'll now hand you over to Paul for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray to God, who has prepared us for a wonderful salvation. May our churches be filled with your glory, and may our worship always be acceptable in your sight. Establish your justice in the world for all the churches and people who live in it. In this winter time, give to the nation the light of Christ, just as you guided the wise men to the place of his birth, so all may celebrate it. We pray for all those individuals who are being affected by the pandemic in the UK and around the world. That your will be known and followed by all people because pure unbounded love thou art. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come into the hearts of all with your transforming love to break down the barriers that hold people apart. We give thanks for the generosity of the people of Trafford and this, of this church towards Stratford Food Bank as they help many families who needed their support during the pandemic. Bless us here today, our friends and neighbours, as we pray you will share your love with the leaders of our country at a national level, plus those who are uh, leading in Greater Manchester and particularly our own council. We also join with the people of the USA as they pay for a peaceful transition to a new presidential term of office. Guide into your truth all who are seeking assurance and do not know what they are looking for. Remind us all that we share more together than what divides us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our families with mutual love and encourage us to into each other's service to meet our mutual needs. We give thanks for the generosity of our congregation and local community who donated toys to uh, the Wood Street Mission and Trafford Domestic Abuse Services before Christmas. Make us holy in our lives together as we celebrate Christ's Epiphany. He comes with the treasures of his grace to enrich the humble poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hungry, oppressed uh, and sick in body and mind and raise them up to feel the healing power of Christ. Lord, grant them their rightful place at your side so they will understand they are not alone. We pray for those on our parish healing list and anyone else on our minds today who are ill in body or mind. We pray that you will lay your hands upon them now. You alone can light their way. You alone can make them whole once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently whether through the virus or some other cause. May they be held in eternal life through the offering of himself. We also use this time to call to mind those special people and loved ones who meant so much to us, but who died in years gone by. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we spend this week lost in wonder, love and praise of you. As we end up our prayers, may they be received in the peace of Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for those beautiful prayers. <clears throat> so we now turn to the part in the service of the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another with a sign of peace, with a wave or a smile. Peace be with you all. Now turn to our part in the service where we will receive communion. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All oh, glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught upon the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking the bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, though we are many. We are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. We'll just hold a moment of quiet to hold before God all our thoughts and prayers for our loved ones in the world around. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your spirit that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. 
Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, and the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. So just some notices. Um, um, yeah, we have got um, the giving. We've moved the slide towards the end of the service before that works a bit better. So we'll be having it at the end now, the giving. Just to remind you, please do keep giving to the church. Um, we, we obviously are short of finances at the moment with uh, so little services actually taking place in church. So um, but we're really grateful for any support you can give. Um, we've, if you notice, we've raised so far 1,950, uh, not including the gift aid, um, but also through easy fundraising, we're raising more through that. But please, can people um, keep giving to the church and think of creative ways to raise money for the church? And we'll watch a video now. Our church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services, fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you're able to give to us now, here's how you can help. Just another couple of notices on top, just to say we're going to start um, a fortnightly coffee morning now. We thought it'd be quite a nice way to connect with one another. The first one will be taking place this Saturday, um, and then we'll normally have the first and the third of the month. It's going to be 11 till 12 on Zoom. Um, the first one is going to be kind of trying to uh, decide what, what we would like to do as a coffee morning group. Um, just various ideas which have been floated, um, maybe theological discussions, uh, maybe quizzes, maybe bingo even. I mean, we, we can be as creative as we want, maybe a mix of all of them. Um, so please put your thinking caps on, and if you would like to join us, that'll take place on a fortnightly basis, 11 till 12, but the first one will take place this Saturday. Um, so I think we can be quite creative, but it's nice to meet as well, as well as obviously having this service. Um, can I also uh, just say a massive thank you to you, Paul. Um, I know for a lot of us, we turn up on these Zoom services and this service pops up and we have new pictures and we have different songs and different, and it's all basically, the long and short of it is, Paul pulls it all together each week and puts the service together in his own time, which I'm sure so many of us are so grateful to, because it's, it's such a gift. And it means that we can worship together. And I mean, the professionalism of it, Paul, you do a wonderful job. So seriously, thank you so much. I, I, I don't want to embarrass you every week, but I just do need to say that because from the bottom of my heart, you do a wonderful job. And, and I know we're all very grateful to you for doing that and pulling it all together. So thank you so much. Um, do we have any more notes? Just to slip to the other thing just to say is church, it, it, we're going to reevaluate looking at church again in mid-Feb. Um, the way things are, I'm not sure we will be opening that soon, but anyway, at least we'll kind of, that's that's the target for when we re reconvene, at least look at whether we can open church again. So please do keep the church in mind. I, I find it really difficult not be able to meet in person, um, but I think this is the next uh, thing we have. So we'll keep doing our serve services because at least we get to see each other on the screens. I was saying to a friend 10 years ago, we wouldn't have probably, or 20 years ago, if this pandemic happened, we wouldn't even have this to be able to do. So we're lucky really that we can do this and still meet um, over the screen and stuff. So um, does anyone else have any more notices? No, no, smashing. Right, so our final song, I want you to sing your hearts out, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
So apparently Jesus, Jesus was born, born of May. May. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, thank you thank so you much so for joining us today. It's, it's been, been, been a lovely service to all in Facebook and YouTube. And please do say a special prayer for Man United and I Saturday. Now go in peace through love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.